being a bit short with us. It's just, um, you know, just be positive. And, and the reason why that is, is if you're doing the dishes and the sink um, empties and you're having a shower at the same time that you're... Which are portable, packed away in their own bag, and they have been the best. All right, and what we thought we would do today, on today's episode, yes. is share with you our experiences in the first two or three months of owning a caravan. Yes. From purchasing to um, traveling around to caravan parks. And to every, to day-to-day -day experiences, things that we've cropped up. Yeah. And we thought, oh, we've learned from that. Yeah, very much so. So um, we did as much research as we could by going on YouTube, yeah? yeah with other caravanners, especially new caravanners, and what they experienced in their, their go workarounds. So we thought that, because we really enjoy those workaround videos and you know those um, new experience type videos. So we thought from our own unique perspective, we would share with you uh, our um, hacks, our go arounds, and things that we came across and thought, we didn't even think about that yet. yeah and we hope that these tips will be helpful for you as well yeah absolutely so if you want to head off yeah um something that we do now which we didn't do was to keep gold coins or a collection of coins in the van yes um this cropped up because remember that episode with the dog can we oh, went yes. to the bistro and we were watching Henry. Yeah. Well, as a protest, Henry did a wee on the bed. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. we do have a washing machine and we did wash the bedding. However, we packed up and we were heading out the next morning, so we weren't able to dry yes. our bedding. Oh, I didn't find a dryer, that's right. Yeah. Yes. So at the caravan park, we found a dryer. But, However, we didn't yes. have coins. No coins, because we just tap and go. We're a tap and go generation. So we had to go to the shops. I, I, the so I, I filled up the servo and said to the lovely man, hey, look, here's 10 bucks. Can I have some coins or 15 yeah. bucks, whatever it was? Yeah. And um, he goes, he looked at me like, ah, oh, you're one of those, like you're from the caravan park. Yeah. And he, and he yeah. accommodated. So we did at nine o'clock at night, we did access the dryer. Our bedding was dry. Yeah. We could put our bedding back on off the next morning. Yeah. So there's the first one. Always have a handful <laughs> coins. of coins. The next one we might talk about is, and I experienced this one. Um, uh, we got into a caravan park, doesn't matter which one it was, and the lady behind the counter, she was just grumpy, man. There's like, been a few grumpy. Oh, yeah, they were like just grumpy. And at that moment in time, you've got to think about, well, I still want to get a good sight. Yes. I want to be put in a nice place and uh, you've just got to be nice to people when they're grumpy because they're a captive audience you're a bit tired you've been on the road all day you want to get yeah. and I wonder if it uh, reflects on what position or site you're given yeah, it absolutely does so yeah. you know you want to get in and get a really good site and if you're grumpy and say you know a bit abruptly hey look you know you're taking too long or why are you upset or whatever they're just gonna say oh you go down to site 13 and site 13 is right next to the dump point Right, so you don't want that, no. right? So even though, and we've had a couple who have been a bit short with us, it's just, um, you know, just be positive and, and, and live and work with them and, and maybe try and bring them into your positivity, yeah? And uh, maybe they'll be a bit happier. Another point, mm -hmm. just on that point, this is a, a, a subsequent point to that point, is, and this is one that it feels a little bit unfair, actually, this point here, is which goes on from there mm. we've been to a couple of caravan parks where we booked a long time ago yeah and they kept really good spots for us and said this is your spot because you booked you know many months ago so by booking you get the spot on the river for example and then at the same booking time frame we've gone in expecting to be on one of like the river frontages and they say oh, you're right up the back and i said but we booked a long time ago and they said that's just what's available and got a bit pissy with us that's the yeah. spot and it's like well wait a sec what's the advantage what's the yeah. point of booking well in advance mm. so don't think that if you book well in advance unless you itemize a specific site number i mm. guess and that's available yeah. yeah but on the other hand when we went to renmark and we were on the river front oh they kept it because we booked it a long yeah, time they had kept that yeah. spot for us yeah that's right on the murray we had requested it. a murray spot and even though the, the place was booked out that spot was waiting for us 
So I definitely go back to Renmark. So this next one was given to us by um, my brother-in-law, Brett, who said, with your sullage, increase the sullage hose from the standard size, whatever that is, which comes with the caravan, to at least a 42 mil. And the reason why that is, is if you're doing the dishes and the sink um, empties and you're having a shower at the same time that you're putting the washing on, I'm not sure you do all those three things at once, but if you were, what's gonna happen is the water is gonna back up in the shower. And we've seen that across a couple of YouTube videos that's occurred. Yeah. And that's because you've only got, with so much volume going in, if the hose has only got a small you know, diameter, it's mm. not getting through. There's yes. always going to be a bit of backup there. And in the Barossa, one of our neighbouring caravans, they had the smaller hose. And they mentioned that too. Yeah. yeah, and the lady was saying that the water would back up from the sink. Yeah, from the Again. sink and in the shower. Yeah. So get the larger hose, okay? So that's another one. And the next one is when we ordered the caravan and we got it at the home show, we, we wheeled and dealed a bit and we said, can we have two TVs, please? Otherwise, yes. there's no deal but two smart TVs with DVDs. Yes, DVDs. Yep, yeah, you mentioned DVDs. And you might think, well, what do you need two TVs for? Well, when we were touring the Barossa over the Christmas break, um, they had uh, the Big Bash, uh, Big Bash um, cricket. And I like to watch the Big Bash cricket. And what I did is I set up um, uh, our TVs, but I set up one outside and one inside. So we, subsequently we have an outdoor TV yeah. which is a permanent outdoor one mm -hmm. and we have one put aside for indoors. Yeah very much so. Mm. So that I could sit out there and eat a meal and enjoy it and then come inside when it's a bit later I just turn them off instead of setting up dragging it around. It's only small things but wow it really adds to just disconnecting it Put yeah. it in here, disconnecting it. Put You're it absolutely there. right. It really adds just really convenient, absolutely convenient, absolutely. Yeah. Um, another traveling with dog story. Um, the reason why we left poor old Henry in the van was because we thought we couldn't bring him into a bistro. Mm. However, a neighboring caravan yes. had said they had gone to the same bistro with their dog. Always ask ahead of time when you book. Do you have an alfresco area or beer garden or, beer garden beer garden, or yeah. outdoor area where you can dine Take your pets. with a dog? Yeah. The next point is, I'm sure we're all guilty of this, is uh, packing too many clothes oh my and God. too many shoes. When I end up wearing the same two outfits probably over a week yeah. anyway. Yeah. I swear to God, I think I packed four pairs of, of footwear shoes, you know some like sandals some two runners some good shoes for going out some boots boots what am i going to work so yeah and, and just takes up space yeah. so i think that we really need to pack a lot lighter yeah and we do now oh okay and the next one and this really um yes. bit us in the bum especially on our south australia trip we realized yeah. this yeah this one really bit us on the bum you you pop <laughs> you pop in the gps you're at location a and you need to go to location B. And you're just used to driving there. And if it says it's 100 k's, you know, and you're doing 100 k an hour, there's an hour and a bit, you know, no problem at all. Yeah, not so much when you've got a caravan. You've got to accommodate for headwinds, I swear, from Horsham all the way into Barossa, into Adelaide, we had a headwind the whole way and the foot was just flat to the floor just to keep up with the speed limit because we had a headwind. But it wasn't just the fuel consumption and it was doing about 29, 30 litres, you know, per 100k or something. Um, it was the time. Yeah, always add an hour or so Oh, on it just to the slowed trip. us right up and we're pulling over all the time, letting people go. So we now comfortably add an hour and a half to what the GPS says, if we're going on longer trips, Okay, because we like to let people go. We pull over to a you know the shoulder when it's safe to do so. Double that kind of thing, uh, but definitely allow for headwinds, allow for mountains, you know, inclines, sleep or otherwise, mm -hmm. and um, just allow overall time. Because yeah. when you're when you're pulling a caravan, you're definitely invested. You, you're mm -hmm. definitely thinking more so, and you're conscious of the brakes. You're conscious of taking off. You're conscious of slowing up earlier. You're conscious of wide turns. All of those things. And that all um, has a toll on the time in which it takes to get yeah. you there. And make sure that you always leave some extra time for like landmarks to stop. 
Yeah. Because it's about the journey, not always getting there, isn't it? Mm, yeah, no, that's um, a, You yeah, might see that's silos, you might see a giant kangaroo, I don't know what. But always, we always stop and mm. look at things along the way. That's a really good one, actually. Really good one. Okay, and the next one on the list is um, we, we did a lot of research and we talked and we, and we investigated cooking and we weren't really comfortable cooking with gas and, and pulling out you know a slide out drawer and the baby Weber and all of that so we invested in induction cooking yes we have two induction hot plates yes. which are portable packed away in their own bag and they have been the best Mom, um, so induction quick. cooking is so quick, yeah. you can adjust the temperature to Instantly. what you need mm. and it has a very even cooking as well. Yeah. yeah. And so we just bring out, if we're making a bigger meal, mm -hmm. we'll bring out both induction plates and plug mm -hmm. them in outside. If it's just a smaller breakfast, for example, we'll yeah. bring out just the one and cook up or fry up whatever we need. It's easy to clean. Yes. easy to pack away you're not frying things inside making yeah. a mess That's right. and as well all the cooking odors and smells are outside. outside as well but there's there is a caveat there okay mm. if you're on shore power at caravan park yeah then you just plug in but if you're not you can't do induction cooking unless you've got an inverter and yeah. we knew that we were going to do induction cooking so we had installed a 3000 watt inverter yes. so when we want to do induction cooking i just hit the inverter switch which generates um, power, all power points in the van, then um, throw over to 240 volt 10 amp. Yeah. So then the power points outside included, and bang, we're off. Yeah. And then when I'm finished that, I turn the inverter off, we're back to 12 volt, the TV works, you know, the uh, lighting works, the you know, radio works, mm. the fridge is on gas anyway. Yeah. So we only turn the inverter on when we need to do, to use power points for the inverter. Yeah. 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 However, when we were off grid, we did use the generator. Oh, and yes. we were using the induction hot plates with the generator. Yeah. And there was a bit of adjustments that need to be made. Sorry, when we're off grid, yeah. we're off grid today. Where you see us today, yes. we're at a caravan park, but we're in the, the free camp component where there's no water, there's no power. When we were last at the forest, the yes. Rushworth State Forest, we were there for an extended period of time uh, and we wanted to use a lot of energy. So we had the air conditioning on because like 40 degrees, we yes. had the induction cooking. Then we got the Jenny out. We got yes. the generator out and we got our 15 amp lead. You know, the thing yes. was 20, 30 meters away. Couldn't hear the generator. No one else in the forest, it was no issue. And um, that, that just solved all our yeah, we had to turn the generator up, but also turn the temperature down yeah, to compensate. Yeah. So what you, in relation to turning the generator up, what you're referring to, yes. it's got economy mode, and then it's got full mode, where it goes full belt and you get full 10 amps out of it, as opposed to just an yeah. idling mode. Yep, so, so thumbs about, up to yeah. induction cooking. Yeah. The next one, nothing true is said. We find that when you open up your door in the morning, what you look at, um, really reflects on how you're going to feel for the rest of that day. We've been to a couple of caravan parks where they weren't much more than caravan car parks with nothing in them really, a bit of a playground for the kids at best and uh, no facilities, you know, a bit some toilet and shower, but that's about it really. Mm. They're really more just drive through sites for in and out. So we've learnt that you get what you pay for if you get a bargain and say oh it's only x amount and it's at a town i've never been to i'll give you the heads up there's not going to be much more of that caravan park from our experience yes that it's not much more than just a caravan car park what we call caravan car park so or a drive-through or an overnighter yeah. where you're not going to set up yeah so straight away what we will normally do is when we've got filters on wiki camps or any just caravan site We'll have filters in terms of entry level, in terms of the dollar value, mm. and we'll put it up a little bit because we know there are a lot of places that, you know, even caravan parks, you know, 20, 30 bucks a night or something. And uh, if you're going to go to a caravan park and get water and sullage and electricity bathrooms. And, it, and bathrooms and it's 20 bucks a night, man, I'll give you the heads up. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's a caravan car park. That's just our experience anyway. So there you go. So the other one now is what we've learned, we optioned for the gas continuous hot water. Yes. 
the downside to the gas continuous hot water is it takes a moment or two to bring up to temperature. Yes, I love a roasting hot shower. 43 degrees, 39 degrees. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So to remedy that, yeah, so we change the temperature. Yeah, so we, we change the temperature according to who's going in the shower. Yeah. But what we've found is when you've got the flick mixer in the shower, if you put the flick mixer on, say, the middle where it's hot and cold equal, and you're finding the temperature, it takes a while and it plays with the continuous hot water where it can go a bit hot, cold, hot, cold. So what we've learned to do is instead of having it at say 45 degrees and then you do a nice temperature for you, yes. I do a nice temperature for me, we actually uh, put the temperature to what you're comfortable with, 40, 43, yes. what I'm comfortable with, 39, and we put the flick mixer all the way up. So then what's happening is the gas hot water is providing us the exact temperature that we want, no flick mixer, and then what happens is there's no peaks. Yeah, and hot, no, cold, hot, cold. no water wastage yeah. while you, it's getting cold and yeah. hot and cold and hot. But to be sure, you do waste a little bit while you're waiting it to warm up. So yeah. you've got to, you know, not too, much. not too much, but compared to, you know, other yeah. types of heating. So it's yeah. going to be a little bit of efficient there, that's yeah. all. Yeah, so our tip would be to adjust your temperature prior yeah. to the shower. Yeah, very much so. And the next one is something we've started doing is to keep a log book for Vanessa, our caravan. Um, on each page, the kilometers are referenced, so yes. we know how much we traveled on each trip. Yes. There's also a But we, we don't just do from rating. A to Z. No. We do A to B, B to C, C to D, so that we know how many Ks were between those stops. Yes. yes. At the back of the book, there's a accumulative. Yes. How yep. many you've done all up, you can yeah. add them all up. But you also like to write notes about yeah. where we stayed. Yeah, there's also provisions for notes, um, ratings. Yep. There's a rating from poor to fantastic. Yes. And also what type of accommodation? Was it a powered site? Was yep. it a unpowered? Was it free camping, yeah. etc. So we've logged our Phillip Island trip, our Hillsville. Yes. We've got our Horsham, yes. Barossa Valley, Renmark, Mildura. Yep. Um, yeah, all of them. Kerrang, and then we'll be doing Rushworth. Rushworth, yeah. And then good, we'll be adding yeah. Howlett and, River. In. And we just write little notes, just little asterisks or in the margins, little things that we think we're going to forget down the track and then we, we might revisit it. So it's really uh, just providing to us uh, you know, a memory of the, the previous place yeah. so we can be ahead of the curve yeah. for the next one. And it's also good as a resale yeah. value yeah, and so. also for servicing. Yeah. You know how many kilometres your caravan has actually done. Yeah, it's a logbook, isn't it? Mm. One of the main. Excellent. Okay, so our next one is, and it's a really, really simple one, really. Mm. Um, Grant, uh, yeah, we, we came across this from necessity, yes. and the caravan at our storage facility happened to have one yeah. laying about, and yeah. we just grabbed so it. So we're talking about timber blocks, just yes. small timber blocks, quite thick so, thick, so that you get some good purchase. We've come across a couple of sites that have been pretty boggy, but we've also come across a couple of sites that when you're backing the caravan in, there might be a bit of a ridge. So the car, caravan is like that, all like that. Yeah, yeah. And then we've found when you put the jockey wheel on and you need to raise the caravan up, that the jockey wheel is not raising the caravan enough to make it level. Yeah. So then you have to build blocks up so when yeah. you've got the jockey wheel on, you can get to that level yes. that you need. Yes, we've also used these blocks under the stabilizer Yes, as well. and also like where we are here today, and we did it at Rushworth as well, yeah. because we're on a bit of a steep block. The stabilizers, when they're coming out, they, they, they haven't got an infinite, you know, uh, long length. Enough. Yeah, right. Yeah. So then you've got to build the blocks up, but they've got to be reasonably solid blocks. Yes. They can't just be, no. you know, a bit of pine or some old pallets from, you know, from, you know, yeah, you're of, thinking railway sleeper type yeah, yeah, material. Yeah, quite solid. Uh, so under the jockey wheel, also under the stabilizers, because there's nothing worse than, you know, when you're sleeping, if it's high at one end and your legs are going down, or if everybody's rolling on each other because it's going to the right or to the left, yeah, depending on yeah. north or south. So bed. we keep about four or five blocks four or five. in our toolbox. And in case. It, they've been valuable. and. 
we might not use one on one side, but then on another side, we'll use five. Yeah. You know, two on each side, two, four, yeah. plus one at the top. Or none on one side. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely, go down the Bunnings and, you know, see where they've got. Generally speaking, the stuff that we use is the stuff they make treads from. So where you've got outdoor staircases, you'll have some timbers that they use for treads. You've got stringers and treads when you're building a little staircase. Ask for that sort of material, you know, be a bit generous, don't muck around, cut them up by about 200 by 200, or if you want to go a bit yeah. crazy, 300 ours by 300. 300 by 300. Yeah, so we've got decent ones. Um, actually, no, I think ours are closer to 200, we didn't go a foot. Um, so about 200 by 200, and these things are going to last, you know, a millennia, no problem at all. So there's a really good tip too. And here's another tip, and we've been caught out a few times with this tip. When you go to caravan parks, things that um, we didn't realise is every single caravan park we've been to, they give you a code for the gate, and a code for the bathroom toilet. And the codes are required to go into the parks and also out of the parks. And there's been one or two times in the early days where I'm heading off to the bathroom and I get up there and the code is written onto the information pack that they give you when you book. Yes. So I've had to call Susan or, you know, um, what's the code? Yes, you're not going to carry that these piece of packs paper. with you, so. So what's the solution? We actually, when we get our codes, we take a photo with our yes. phones. Yeah. We've usually got our phones on us. Yeah. Most so of the time. When we're coming back into the caravan park and we've got to get in, open up the phone, oh, it's 5713, whatever it might be. Yep. Bang, bang, bang. Otherwise, we're in the glove box. Where is that? Oh, we left yes. information Most in the caravan. Most likely, we leave it in the van yeah. when we go out and about. So that's a really good tip. As soon as you get it, take a photo. As Absolutely take a photo. As easy and simple as it is. Yeah. Now, the other thing is this. When we bought the caravan, we really debated on shelves or hanging space. And I give you the heads up, type in YouTube, caravanners, shelves or hanging space, and just watch it explode. It's, it's, yeah. it's the when same side, it's two sides to the same coin, but it polarizes people, yes? Yes, when we got the car picked the caravan up, we had hanging provisions we on either side the bed. And we thought we'd be comfortable with that. Yeah. yeah. However, we, we found that the hang coat hangers or clothes hangers actually don't fit depth-wise. Yes, as well as we thought they would. And you don't get as many in there as you think. No. Okay. No. So we, we lived with it and said before we put shelves in, let's live with it. We, we said that, right? Yes. And then when we got to the Barossa, I thought, this is ridiculous. I'm no. only getting X amount, this much space for, no. you know, half a dozen shirts said, or a jumper. Can you please install shelves? Now here's the thing, for those of you who think I've got to get a tradesperson out, I've got to have a bazillion tools in a garage somewhere and I've got to have all of these, you know, fixings and all of these different timber. While we were in um, the Barossa, there was a lovely Mitre 10 store, yes. right? I'm um, around the corner in one of the, the towns that we stayed at. And I went there, I measured because we decided we're getting shelves and we put a couple of shelves in. I measured the shelves, went to the store, spoke to a lovely gentleman there and said, could you cut these up for me? He cut them up for me. I was then very conscious that I didn't want to put fasteners, i.e. screws or nails or any other type yeah, of fastener. No, no brackets or anything. Yeah, I didn't want to put them into the walls of the caravan. The internal walls didn't worry me as much, but the external walls, I don't know what's in those walls. Electrical wires, pipes. you know, pipes for plumbing, air yep. conditioning, who would know, right? So I, I was really conscious I didn't want to um, uh, penetrate any of the walls. So with no tools, literally with no tools, I went to the Mitre 10 with a list with exact measurements. I got some liquid nails, I got some white all-purpose filler. Mm. And what we did over the 24 hours, put my brackets in with, we got a special liquid nails that's fast curing. So we put the liquid nails in, put a bit of tape, done all our markings, let them cure overnight. Then we got our actual um, shelves, popped them in on top, whole lot of liquid nails, let mm. that dry, then got our white all-purpose oil filler, and then you know beat it all mm. the way around to make it a little bit more professional looking, yeah. let that dry. So within a day or two of doing the project, and, and liquid nails cures really, really quickly, um, we restacked all of our clothes with plenty of space yeah. to spare. And when you say you you adhered the brackets, mm. what did you use for brackets? Timber. Timber. Yeah. Lengths of yeah. timber. Show them here. So they were liquid nailed in. They were set. So here's the thing. We put the shelves on. I've got tools in the car. Yeah. You know, I've got tools in the car. But I didn't need any tools because 
all of the sizes were pre-cut and i kid you not he charges 20 or 30 cents a cut yeah you know and so it was nothing right and then we brought it all back didn't have to sand didn't have to cut nothing just liquid mm. nails fill up bang in done so with no tools everything was purchased and I didn't have to buy a corking yeah. gun because they had these small little compression packs of liquid nails and filler, um, uh, like an aerosol pack, you know, that uh, no um, corking gun needed at all, no tools at all. So. And the job was $30. Yeah, I think it, it, was, it was under that, because it, it was a couple of sheets of nothing. Two sets of shelves. Yeah, and, and it's made such a big difference. So we did a lot of research, like I said earlier, you know, it polarizes shelves or uh, hanging and after using hanging for half hour trip we said this is just a waste we want to get you know stuff in here mm. um, because it's not just shelves for clothing you can put lots of things we put baskets in there and all sorts yeah, of other things yeah, you know yeah. which you can't do with hanging no that's right no so go team shelves go team shelves hashtag team shelves okay the other one is interior decorating obviously you can see this What's this dear? Some brush bottle or something? What is this? Oh yeah, well wattle. Wattle. Type there look. you go, wattle. Okay. It's not real wattle. Yeah. But here's the thing. Looks nice there, but then when you're driving, you know, all over Red Rover, because this little cafe table folds up, we choose to put this one in the cupboard when we're driving. But the other ones, what we did is we've got sticky dots, big sticky dots here. Velcro? Velcro sticky dots. And we've decided where we want to put them and we've got they're like invisible through the bottom and a sticky dot down there now if we do need to move them because we're cleaning surfaces just come off clean the surface go back down but we don't have to keep moving them when we travel yeah that's correct and they've stayed in their spots have moved. however rough and ready the ride has been they've stayed in their spots there's no weight in them and we get the ones With the that glass. have got it's glass but it's got poured resin and we like the poured resin because the weight is at the bottom. So yeah. they're quite bottom heavy and they're quite top light. So they stay it's easily, efficient. even without the sticky dots, yeah? Yep. But with the sticky dots, they stay for sure. So interior decorating, if you want to look, you know, looks a bit, bit of nature around the joint. Yeah, a bit homely. A bit homely, yeah, sticky dots for sure. The other one we'll jump straight onto now, and this is a manufacturer's error. And I think it's a poor design we're talking about the bed, two parts to the bed. The first one is if you if you order with a bolster, yes. so that means you can actually pull the mattress out um, and then put a bolster in, extending the overall distance yeah, the of length, the mattress, the which we chose to. Yes. Okay. But when you pull the, the extender part out, you pull the extender part out and it stops because it's got a tether. The challenge is here, I don't understand why in R&D they didn't pick it up. They just used- Curtain um, wire. Curtain wire, wasn't it? Yes. With a loop. Yep. And then like stretchy a screw spring, or a stretchy pop rivet, right? Spring. Stretchy spring curtain wire. And you already, I know you're really clever. You would have worked out what's gonna happen. Over time, when you pull it out, put it in. Pull it out, pull it in. It started to stretch. Yeah. And then at some point, it went so far that the sleeve came out oh, and just dropped down. Yeah. Okay, so it just came out. So it goes in like that, and then it comes out, goes in, comes out. But yeah. then one day it went, it just dropped off. And I opened it up and said, "What's going on here?" And the thing was stretched to the to the billio. Yeah. So then what I did is I got a bit of jack chain. The first thing we did was I got a bit of jack chain, um, and you can go to Mitre Ten, you can go to Bun and just ask for jack chain. And it was a bit light gauge. That was actually starting to stretch too. Yes. So then we got a bit more, uh, the chain that we got was a couple of uh, gauges. gauges up, thank mm -hmm. you. And we haven't had a problem, haven't looked back since. No. So we can pull it out with as much force as we want and it's going nowhere. So, you know, if anybody from Design RV are watching this and thank you, we love your product, change the tether spring from a curtain wire yes. to something that it's a couple of gauges above jack chain, please. Yes? Yes. Okay, and that was an easy fix too. Like I said, yeah. I got some, just went to the hardware. We went to the hardware and just got some, some chain and that was easily fixed too. Sorts of yeah. things you just don't know when you're buying a caravan at a caravan show, yeah? Yeah. 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 The other thing is this, and thank you to somebody on YouTube. We spotted this only a week or two ago where they said, if you feel you're not comfortable in your bed or, and here's the kicker, yes. if you feel like you're rolling in your bed yes. for whatever reason, Me. And then all of a sudden, Susan, I, I, especially Susan, her eyes lit up because she 
not going crazy, From was, day one. was was very aware that she felt that she was rolling into the center of the bed. And I said, dear, but I'm not, what's going on? And this lovely lady um, on YouTube, uh, I'll try and find her name because it, all credit goes to her. Um, she said, do you know that when you lift the mattress up and you've got these bowed resistant slats, they've got these in the center, they've got these rings on them. And depending on where you put the rings, will shape the firmness yeah um or the relaxed or, or the relaxed state yeah, of of the, of the support yes so what we did is we moved all of these supportive rings which were previously uh Loose. to the extreme sides mm. two on each side we moved them all the way to the outside and what that does is if you can imagine there's two um like slats and they're bound here, right? Mm. So they're quite rigid. Mm. But if if you take what's binding them to the end, they're not rigid anymore and they've got a bit more relaxed. Mm. Where they were rigid was a high point. Yeah. And that's what we found out. You were moving across because there was a high point in the slats of the bed. So then we moved them, no more high point, everybody's Resolved. snoozing. Snoozing like a bubby. Resolved. Resolved, so that's another one too. So when we picked up the van, there was a super strong smell of silicon wasn't yeah it? there was and that was however often you kept the windows open it was you'd close the windows and the silicon yeah. was like burning your eyes like it was yeah. so strong it really was yeah. so what we've done is we bought a soy melt infuser, infuser yes, yes that we plug okay. into the power point yeah and we've got a lovely caramel vanilla smell throughout the caravan. Yeah. No more silicon smells. Yeah. So that's as simple as that is. It just makes a difference to our experience. And we've got soy melts at home. Yeah. And we use the same ones. So it brings home to here. And yeah. you know, life's all about senses, you know, smell, taste, sight. And if you can link home and your decor is the same, this decor in here is very similar to ours at home, mm. and flowers everywhere in your lovely, you know, garden. Um, and then the sense of smell and it brings you back home yeah. it's only a small thing I get it but man it makes a big difference yeah and it's only a tiny unit mm, it's only yeah. another tip with the soy melt burner is if you're going to be traveling that morning don't switch it on yes the hot wax or stay soy liquid. will stay liquid you need we to, want to keep to it solid try up. yeah absolutely that's a really good tip actually so another one is we know that we're limited by space. You might want to install everything, but if you can't put it somewhere, you can't be tripping on it, right? So we like to vacuum inside, and we've got like a little Dyson or equivalent, I think it's a Black & Decker or something, um, vacuum. And uh, what we did is, because the vacuum breaks down, we actually put the um, brackets in the cupboard, and then I drilled through the cupboard because there's a power point on the other side of the cupboard in the sink and then plugged in the charger which then links to the base yeah. so when it's hooked on it continuously charges so it's tucked away can't mm. even see it yeah. on permanent charge when we do it and it's so convenient yeah and what else are you going to put in a triangular shape that's a cupboard. good point sometimes you've got all this okay. cupboard spacing but sometimes that cupboard space it's an odd shape and you can't put yeah. a square basket in or a rectangular oh. basket so this no. one is just a perfect fit, isn't it? Yes. That's a perfect fit, yeah. Uh, something that we've resolved, we've been thinking about it, was our curtains. Oh, yes. Curtains. Good um, one, good we one. We were told that when you travel, not yes. to put the fly screens or windows up, yes. they overstretch over yeah. time. The, the springs yeah. in this guy here overstretch yeah. and then they fail. Yeah. We were also told that if you store your caravan for yes. a length of time, not to leave them up. That's correct. Because it will also overstretch. So what did we do? This is what we did. Yeah. We actually have adhesive Velcro. Can't see it. It's on all the concealed. Very top. Yep. Um, with a curtain with the matching piece of yeah, matching just piece sewn of into Velcro, it. Yep. Which, when we store the caravan, it's yep. a just a hook and loop Velcro system. Yeah, but it's also a oh, it's block out. Block out. Yeah, it's block out. Block UV out block out curtain. and privacy. Yeah. Block out. So UV. when we store the caravan, 
And that also includes the hatches. Yes. We made one for the hatches yes. for light coming through the hatch. Yes. When we store the caravan, we apply our lockout yeah. curtains, yeah. which provides a security, security and protection from the sun as yeah. well. And it also protects our fly screens and and privacy, privacy screens and it's going to keep those springs in top class working order for the life of the caravan the use the serviceable life yes. of the caravan yeah. yeah serviceable life of the caravan so that's a really good yeah. tip. yeah and a lot of trial and error went into this we tried pegs yes we tried yes. uh fusion yeah fusion hooks, hooks on, the side. on the side didn't and work nothing and worked. we've had no problem with them at all no They've velcro really is the yeah. way to go really good hey look the other one we talked about privacy so that's like security mm -hmm. uh, we got a discount on our security because we've got a DO35 um, hitch lock and then a matching a wheel clamp and um, so the insurance? discount was good yeah discount on insurance yep. yeah but it's also peace of mind um, probably not so much when we're at a caravan park because okay. the people around you know who you are and if somebody just comes along in some big old car they think oh, I don't remember that person somebody's gonna ask questions yeah. but when you're in a forest yeah. when you're shore camping yep. and you're into town you want to know that something that's going to, you know, hook it up and they're off. So the DO35 lock and then the wheel clamp matching lock yes. um, with some pretty serious tamper-proof type keys. Um, we just feel one um, confident that when we head off into town, that we've got that reassurance. Hey, look, if you're going to, going to get an angle grinder or a gas axe, you're getting in. Good luck. Knock yourself out. But to Joe Public, who's coming along, we think I'll just, you know, throw it on the back of. of, of of the tow ball or the DR35, uh, it's going to prevent them, I'd suggest, mm. or at least say, I'll go to the next one. So, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, look, thank you for joining us. So, all we've done is shared our first three months of picking up, sorry, purchasing, picking up, using, and then reviewing our caravan journey over the last three months to this point. So, our perspective is unique because we're new to caravanning and we're new to being on the road. So we hope that those who are watching, who are entering into the caravan market. Yeah, or who may want to. Yeah, or may want to. They're thinking about going to a caravan show. What's the sort of things I need to get ready for? Mm. I guess that's our audience today. Or we actually made some notes because we thought that it was important to share with our community because we've got quite a few people following us now in a very short period of time. Yeah. Mm. So thank you for that. Um, our subscriber base is going up exponentially and you know what i'd like to acknowledge that you're sitting there now on your couch or on your yeah. chair your favorite chair and you're watching us and that's on purpose yeah so thank you yeah you're choosing to pass by somebody else and to come to us and we really appreciate that so thank you for just watching and the comments too we love the comments too you know yeah okay. so thank you for coming along we've really enjoyed putting it together i know it's, we've got it quite a lot there um, but we just, look, we hope it's helped. Yeah, yep. we hope it's helped. Uh, yep, until next time. Until next time. Bye.